Tell me, does anybody except me think that the charm has somewhat worn off eating in the living room all the time you finished with your mm -hmm. third helping? Oh, I kind of like it. You know, it's like having a picnic every time we eat. It's yeah. an inconvenience every time we eat. No kidding. When Are can we finished? use our dining room again? As soon as we get it cleaned up. Are you finished? Oh, yeah. We'll get the stuff out of Tell me, room. do I have any volunteers for the cleanup job? No, I'm with Parrish. I kind of like eating here in the living room. Why mm -hmm. am I not surprised? I'll get it. Well, that's for me. I'm not here. I got classes. You're never here. When you're here, you're not here. Oh, oh, I'll I'll Hello. I will. Oh. Yes. Yes, hello. Blackie, hold on a minute. Yes. Ah, just hang on. For what? Well, I'll I'll finally I caught up with you. All right. I have fun. Fine. We'll be here. Thank you. It was your probation officer. <laughs> what did I tell you? What for? He wants to come and see us today. Why? Gee, I was hoping you could tell me. We've got to get up. Who says? I do. It's essential oh. that we keep up appearances. We've got to get up and get dressed and get to work. We can't let anybody know that we're spooked. Why not? It's true. Look, advertising it isn't going to make it any easier. Well, this only place I feel safe is right here. I know. But we've got to keep up a strong front even though we don't feel like it, okay? Oh, dear. Well, at least I don't have to go in until this afternoon. Well, I don't have that luxury. I gotta go now. You know, you're acting awfully confident for a man who could very possibly be on his way to jail. Why shouldn't I? Well, I can think of several reasons. All of them, starting with the name, Mr. Scorpio. Alan, he is after you now that he found that picture you shot up. Let him come after me. I've got an airtight alibi. I was at the hospital when Susan was being murdered. Once he confirms that, he's going to stop looking for me. That's it. I'm not that sure. Look, if we as a family stick together, we're going to be fine. Oh, Alan, we have said that so many times, and all it's gotten us is into more trouble. I'm scared. Oh, don't be, Monica, really. The police can't touch us. They can't. Yes, and unfortunately, Mr. Scorpio is not an ordinary policeman. Now, what were you doing in jail, Tolliver? Celebrating? Morning. Morning. Lila Morgan married to Edward Quarterman, August 10, 32. Lila Morgan married to Crane Tolliver, March 32. Neither party deceased, no annulment on record, no divorce on record. There's got to be some part of this missing. Now, if Lila never divorced Tolliver, that means that she can't possibly be married to Edward would make prime blackmailing material. Right. The sort of material that somebody would kill for to keep secret. Class. Oh, no, you are not. You are going to stay here until you at least talk to the man. This happens to be a little more important than going to school today. Okay, I'll, I'm going to remember you said that. You just be here, you got it? Where are you going? I have to get to the hospital, and uh, Leslie, you're going to be here, though. You have the day off, right? Mm -hmm. Good, so she will be here when he has to talk to him, right? I wouldn't miss it for the world. You can have it. Call me the second you find out what this is all about. I will, okay? but I don't want you to worry about it. Yeah. If you need me, I can be here in about ten minutes flat. We can manage. It'll be all right. You, no back talk. You treat him with respect. Got it? I know how to talk to these clowns. I've had enough practice. You're going to have some more practice today, I think. Good. 
I think I I'm going to run away part. from home. What? Well, it's my day off, too. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You're not going to be anywhere around here when that man shows up. Because he'd haul me off to jail in five minutes for beating the heck out of you. Well, then, Parrish, I suggest you be very, very nice to me. In fact, you know, Les and I are going to plan Claudia's bridal shower. I think you should help us. My future's on the line, Amy. And you're talking about stupid parties. You're nuts. Crazy. Could you give me some coffee, please? There isn't any. Why not? I didn't make it. What's wrong? You look awful. What's that mark on your face? Bumped into a door. What about it? Why aren't you dressed? This is good enough. Don't you have any plans for today? What difference does it make? All right. Tell me about this Tolliver character. Well, there isn't too much to tell, really. What there is is quite interesting insofar as that he was um, Lila's first husband. I didn't know she was divorced. She isn't. When did Tolliver die? He didn't. He's very much alive. In fact, he spent the night of the murder here in the Port Charles City Jail. I'm just wondering whether he's still hanging around town here. I would love to have a chat to him. What's the point? If he spent the night in jail, he's got the world's best alibi. Maybe. But I happen to think he could put a few little pieces to this puzzle. Now, if Lila was married to Tolliver, never got a divorce, that means that her marriage to Edward is invalid which makes her a bigamist. Now, I will bet the Quartermains would do anything to hush that up. I also bet that's exactly what Susan was blackmailing them for. Not this song and dance act about Lila having had an affair before she married Edward. That was just a smokescreen, something to keep me jumping. Mind you, it did for a while, too. But not long enough, unfortunately, for them. Hey. Hey, what's happened to Nancy Drew? How am I going to solve this, uh, this case if I don't have the help of my trusty assistant. Thought you like detective work. Maybe you could put on some coffee. Look, we'll have a late breakfast together. I'm supposed to meet Bobby and Ruby at Kelly's for lunch. What do you mean supposed to? I don't think I'm gonna go. Why not? Because I don't feel like it. You still depressed? Shouldn't I be? Look, you're going to have to pull out of this sometime. You can't mope around here indefinitely. There comes a time when you're going to have to snap out of it. Scorpio here. Right. Yeah. Okay, hang on a second. It's the jail. I'll have to take it. Will you please put on some coffee for me? Yeah. Sorry about that. Look, uh, I want to talk to the guard that was on duty the night that, uh, the night that Susan Baldwin was murdered. I'd like to question him about a... about a certain person called Tolliver. He was in the drunk tank that night. Thank you. But, Alan, I'm still worried. Monica, there's no need for you to be worried. Scorpio is just playing games with you. He doesn't seriously think that you murdered Susan. But he could think you did. That's his privilege. Let him think it. Well, he's just going to be hounding you as well as he's hounded me. Monica, he's not going to find anything at all. I was at the hospital. I've got an alibi that is documented by hospital records. Well, I hope it's good enough. I arrived at the hospital at 8.30. I checked out at 9.30. Susan was murdered somewhere in that time. There's no way that I could have done it. Scorpio is grasping at straws. Oh, I suppose so. 
Also worried about Lila. Mother, why? Well, the three of us can handle ourselves with Scorpio. But what about her? What if he comes after her? She considers him a friend. What if she just breaks down and tells him the real reason we're being blackmailed? He wouldn't do that, would he? Maybe he would do it. I never thought that he... Oh, dear, now you have me worried as well. What are we going to do? I think I have an idea. I'm glad, because I don't have one. Look, you go on to the hospital, and um, I'll take care of Lila and Scorpio. Oh. Never mind, never mind. I just have a feeling that with a little cooperation, I can keep Lila from ever coming in contact with Scorpio. You sure you don't want me to do anything? No, just go ahead. Honest, I mean it. Okay. Talk to you later. Mrs. Scorpio, oh, I am so glad to meet you. Uh, well, uh, who might you be? I'm Florence, from Florence's Tots and Teens. Of course you are. I was wondering if I might have a few minutes to speak with Mrs. Scorpio. Uh, why not? Yeah, come in. Thank you. I'll get right to the point. I heard that you bought a darling antique baby crib from a store near mine. Yes. Well, news about the commissioner's wife travels fast. I don't have to tell you that. I wanted to bring you a present for your new baby. Isn't it beautiful? Crocheted entirely by hand. All of our things are made by hand. Well, we have the finest selection of baby apparel and accessories in Port Charles. I'd like to personally invite you to visit our store. Oh, how dare you! I beg your pardon? Get out and take your horrid blanket with you! Well, uh, I'm so sorry, no, 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 I didn't no, mean to no. say it. I am. Uh, please accept my apology. You had no way of knowing this, but we lost the child. Oh. Oh, no. I, well, I, 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 I didn't know. I, right. I couldn't have. I certainly wouldn't have come really. here. I'm so sorry. Please right. tell Mrs. Scorpio that... Believe me, I will. It's okay. What's the matter with you? Me? Yes. Can you believe her ghoul worming her way into our house, trying to make money off... Off of what? How was the poor woman to know that you'd lost the baby? It was, it was tasteless. No, 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 no. But your behavior certainly was. You were cruel and rude to lash out at her that way. It was totally uncalled for. What's happening to you? Look, you're falling apart. I... Oh, what a great legacy Luke's left on this earth. A woman that can't do anything else except feel sorry for herself. I am not! No, come and have a look then. Come on, take a good, long look. Now, what does that look like to you? The image of a person who's looking after themselves? Well, it certainly isn't mine. Go and clean yourself up and put on some decent clothes for once. Why do you care what I do? Why do I care what you do? I'll tell you why I care what you do. I'm stuck with you, sweet cakes, for one whole year, and I'll be damned if I'm gonna come home every night and see this mess for the next 12 months. Heaven help you if Luke could see you now. No, stop it! You really think that he wants you slobbering and blubbering after him. You know, this guy only had one, one rule. But it was one of the best. No matter what happens to you, no matter how many times you get pushed around or put down, or no matter what or who you lose, when you get thrown off that horse, you jump right back on again and you ride it for all it's worth. You don't flounder around in the dirt and say, oh, how unfair the rodeo is. I know that. But how does it help me? It helps you because he taught us all to love life. To enjoy ourselves. That is, with one exception, it appears, you. You know, I find this ironic. So ironic. That the one woman on this earth that he truly loved is doing the very least to live up to his memory.
Who you are? Oh, just the man I was looking for. Well, so still and said. What's up? I, I, um, I need your help. You've got it. Oh, <laughs> you don't even know what it is yet. It doesn't matter. Well, what it is, is I am worried about Lila. Really? She seems fine to me. Well, with this horrible murder thing and all the investigation going on, I'm afraid that Scorpio's gonna want to question her, and I really, I don't think she's up to it. Oh, I don't know. Lila's a pretty strong woman. I see no reason why she couldn't withstand a little questioning. Now, but, but Grant, uh, there is something else, too, something you don't know about, and I'd... Mm -hmm. But I'd like to share it with you. It would be strictest confidence. Well, by all means. Well, before Lila and Edward got married, uh, Lila had an affair uh, with a married man. His name was Arthur Chesler. And unfortunately, when the man's wife found out about it, she committed suicide. Thank good Lord. Yes. And somehow, somehow, Susan Baldwin got wind of this recently, and she's been using all this information to try to blackmail the family. I see what you mean. If the commissioner were to question Lila... And this became public knowledge, it would kill Lila. I understand. But, as her doctor, I could refuse to allow her to be questioned by anyone. Call it a medical dispensation. You would be willing to do that? I insist on it. Oh, that would be wonderful, Grant. <laughs> Consider it done. I, uh, I wouldn't worry about Lila. I know, I'd better be off to the hospital. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mrs. Brewer. Oh, yeah, Jesse, this is Monica. When Alan comes in, would you tell him, uh, would you give him a message for me? Yes, of course. Well, tell him uh, Lila's been taken care of. That's all? Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll understand. Tell him I'll explain it to him in detail when I see him. Uh, you may have to make an appointment to see him. What, you mean, busy day? Well, he's book solid. He has at least three patients waiting to see him, and the police commissioner just called. He's coming down to talk to Alan as well. Yeah, look, I'm on my way over to General. You can get me there if you need to. Thank you. Robert? Well, look, I'm busy at the moment, and besides, I would just as soon as not talk to you. It's too bloody depressing. Perhaps, maybe some other time, when you're not feeling quite so sorry for yourself. So that would be about now. I just wanted to stop by to tell you I'm on my way out. I don't want to be late. And thanks. For screaming at you? Well, it worked, wouldn't you say? Oh, gloriously. It's just what I needed. Thank you for understanding and doing something about it. Well, you did all the work. I just uh, lit the fire. Now, this is the woman that Luke loved. No, it's a new one. It's one that nobody has ever seen before, and an interesting one, too, I hope, and one I intend to enjoy. You're off to a great start. Well, let's see what Bobby and Ruby have to say about that. I'm meeting them at Kelly's. What are you going to do? Well, I thought I might apply a little more pressure to the quarter mains. Sooner or later, the one that killed Susan's going to crack, and I feel it's my duty to be there to pick up the pieces. Student Union, please. Right. This is Blackie Parish. Well, I don't know who you are either. Big deal. Listen, listen, are there any fraternity guys around there? You know, like Randy or Kip or Skip or any of those guys? Yeah, let me talk to them, right? Yeah, that jerk's fine. Get him on. Kip, buddy, how's it going? Yeah, long time no see. Listen, I'm looking for this girl. Uh, you know that girl you saw in there the other day, Lulu? <laughs> yeah, the one that hit you. That's that's one. Listen, tell her I was supposed to have lunch with her. Tell her I can't make it. I got a probation meeting. It's, it's nothing really. Just tell her that I can't make it. I was supposed to take her to pizza, and I can't. I can't. I can't make it. Okay. Tell Lulu no pizza. Thanks. Bye. Lulu. <laughs> Lulu. Who's Lulu? None of your business. Oh wait a second. Let me check some. You've got it. I knew it. That look of love. Isn't that what they call it? 
Shut up, Amy. Pizza, huh? Oh, Blackie, could I go too? You know where you can go? You okay, can go. Okay, I think yeah. this is the final list for supplies for the shower. That's what I think. How about if we have pizza for dinner? Knock it off, Amy. Right? Oh, speaking of dinner tonight, I had an idea. It's, everybody's going to be home for dinner, right? And we've been wanting to have Grant Putnam for dinner. So I thought that I would call Rick and see if he wants to invite him tonight. What do you think? Ah, that is a great idea. Amy. Oh, now who's got the look, Amy? You are dining with us. I'd rather go for pizza. That's not all he wants to go if out If I were for. you, kid, I would take any opportunities for a home-cooked meal that came my way. You know what I mean? Because, for all you know, after your meeting with your, what you call, probation officer, you could be back on bread and water. Whole family's a comedian. Uh -huh. uh, yes, uh, nurse's station lobby, please. Jesse, hi, it's Leslie. Is Rick anywhere around, do you know? Uh, yes, he is, Leslie. Yes. Hold on. In my opinion, uh, Rick, yeah. your wife. Oh, thank you. Hi, honey. Fine. Uh, how are things there? No sign of Blackie's probation officer. All right. That's a great idea. No, I'll do it. Okay, I'll see you. Bye. Any problems? Uh, Leslie wanted me to invite Grant for dinner. We've been trying to get him over for some time now. Gentlemen. Robert. Commissioner, what brings you here? Hot on the trail of another suspect? Well, you never can tell. But I would like to talk to you both, if I may. Of course. Jesse, could you locate Alan Quartermain for me, please? I'd like a few words with him. I know he's with a patient, but I can ask. Thank you. Let's move over here and sit down. Fine. Uh, basically, I just want to confirm what Captain Ramsey told me yesterday. About Alan? Yeah. Now, as I understand it, you're prepared to swear that you saw him leave here at uh, 10 to 9, and uh, that was on the night of the murder. That's about that time, yes. But by 9, anyway. Oh, definitely. Uh, how can you be sure? Because I was down in the basement, and I saw him leave from the basement door. That struck you as odd? Yeah, it did. I didn't think anything more about it at the time. Yeah, why not? Because he's a quartermain, and all quartermains are a little um, unique. Yeah, so I'm beginning to find out. But you are sure of the time. I'm positive at the time I had just left Steve in CICU and went down to get x-rays and I was going to meet him in the parking lot. He was waiting for me. Steve? That's right. I remember the time because we had just come from CICU. Uh, I was watching the clock to monitor a patient's heartbeat. Uh, I, I went directly from there to the parking lot to wait for Rick. I say, it's all pretty convincing. Is Alan Quartermain a suspect? In a murder investigation like this, anybody that could have benefited from the demise of the victim is a suspect. You wanted to see me, Commissioner? Oh, thank you, Alan. I'm sorry to pull you away from your patients like this, but I do have a few points I'd like to clear up. Clear away? Now, on the, uh, the night of Susan's murder, you checked in here at um, 8.30. That's right. And left again at 10 to 9. Uh, that's right, isn't it, Rick? You saw Alan leave here at 10 to 9? And you'll confirm that, won't you, Steve? Yes. It was 9.30. That's when I checked out. 9.30. Alan, it was 10 minutes of 9, and you left from the basement door. Thank you, gentlemen. I can take it from here. You lied about signing out of here at 9.30? I didn't lie. It's in the register. 9.30. Then you went somewhere before then, at 10 to 9. And I want to know where. I went to Susan's cottage. General Hospital will continue in a moment.